the devastated landscapes of the Lands of Chaos were easily the best weapon at the Empire's disposal. Not only did they offer very little in the way of shelter, water, and food, but they were also plagued with all manner of hostile creatures residing in artificial hives under the ground. The desert surrounding our long-lost home was a sandy paradise compared to this nightmarish unknown. Bearing this in mind, perhaps the existence of a whole culture dedicated to the conquest and destruction of other peoples under the orders of a bellicose goddess was not as implausible as it first seemed. Exactly how they managed to sustain themselves on a day-to-day -day basis was an entirely different mystery, though. I tried my best to keep my mind clear at night, but the memories of my brief encounter with the Emperor continued to haunt me during my sleep. That vision of twisted metal and flesh, those ominous glowing eyes, his metallic voice booming and echoing in the darkness of a cavern, overlapping the constant noise of machines and creatures I had never heard before. Next to him stood somebody else, the silhouette of a woman, holding a book of some sort. She sees you as little more than a burden she constantly has to watch and protect, while she and the necromancer do all the actual fighting. He knew that Anlinde's sacrifice would hardly serve any purpose at all. She let her go, and you did nothing to prevent that tragedy. I am not any more responsible for, the, for your mentor's death than the Lady of Light whom you swore to protect, yet you came to my land seeking vengeance. Do you not see that she is within your reach right now? You know what you must do. Then a voice, an alluring voice belonging perhaps to the woman. She spoke in a language I could not understand. I focused on averting my mind from the scene, just as I felt my arms begin to move on their own. On the surface or underground, it makes no difference to me, Gallas. You will not last long if you stay in my domain, unless you abandon this foolish quest of yours and pledge allegiance to Uriah and me. Then, a sudden flash of red, followed by complete darkness. Since that incident, the Emperor stopped trying to reach me and take control of my body for some reason. Perhaps, even with his rumored power, it was not a tactic that he could use too often. Besides, with us approaching the heart of his domain, there was little reason to keep wasting energy when he could patiently sit and wait for his prey to come. I was absorbed in these thoughts one morning, when we were distracted by an unexpected encounter. Up to that point, we had never suspected we were not the only band of travellers on a mission in these lands. Ooh! Hail, Alfurion! What business brings you to enemy territory so far from the Heart Mountains? I would like to ask you the same question if I may, Lord Gallas. We received word that the Alliance of the Peoples of the Far North sent a team of assassins to the Chaos Capital, but they did not tell us you were a part of it. This is a pleasant surprise. Alfurin, did the King really send you to these lands, knowing that you might never be able to return? Ah, uh, no, it's not like that, fair lady. In truth, I volunteered for this mission out of my own volition, along with the others. The idea did not come from our king either. It's the Valgrin Council's response to the Alliance's call for help. So, what do you say, Lord Callas? Have you concocted an action plan yet? I have to admit, we haven't. We were hoping to get to the Heart region and assess the situation first. Oh ho! Well, you might be interested in knowing that the legions of Uriah appear to be fully preoccupied with the Alliance's troops in the Glamdral region. The Empire's lands are very poorly guarded right now, and even though the enemy is prepared to defend the capital against potential attacks, their numbers are not too impressive. If we act fast, they will not have the time to call for reinforcements from the border outposts. On the other hand, we've heard dark rumours. The Chaos Emperor is in the capital, guarding what is said to be a large portal, portal to Inferno. If this is true, failing to take the Emperor down and close the portal would have disastrous consequences for everyone indeed. Say, Althurin, do you have the resources to mount a distraction? Hmm, the thing is, we don't have much ourselves, as we were only intended to serve as support. 
I figure a distraction is not out of the question, but it probably won't help for long. What do you suggest? I believe I might have a plan that will allow us to get into the capital without having to face the entirety of their defences, but I will need your help and Malkishar's. Ha! <laughs> My help, you say? If you have to stoop to ask me for assistance, then you must have truly run out of ideas. It involves raising many undead soldiers, disguising a few, and unleashing them on nearby enemy settlements while we flank the capital from two different directions. Hopefully, this will keep most of their available troops entertained while we deal with the Emperor and his men ourselves. We will need you to assault the capital together with us, though. The longer my minions are allowed to roam free without my supervision, the more destructive and disorganised they become. Don't take me wrong, though. There's nothing I enjoy more than a chaotic bloodbath. But I would be concerned about this interfering with your plan somehow. Not at all. In fact, the more noise they make, and the more dark soldiers of Uriah they strike off the face of Erdia, the better. Surely a necromancer of your calibre can figure something out. <laughs> yes, yes, I will make sure to not disappoint. I suppose it's time to get moving then. We have a long day ahead of us. Okay, that was the cutscene crossroads. Thus, the battle preparations began. Many times throughout this endless journey, I had hesitated to continue for fear of putting my people's survival at risk. But now that they were in the safety of the far north, and under the command of more capable leaders than I, my only fear was being manipulated by our enemies and becoming the instrument of my friend's demise. Elinia reassured me that she would not let that happen as long as she could draw breath. What if you could not prevent it, though? I asked. What if the unholy power the Emperor wields surpasses even your own, and it becomes impossible to stop me? She could not offer a concrete answer to the question, but I thought I could read the solution in her eyes. And, as Lord Galas of the Elves, I would have certainly agreed that it was a reasonable course of action. Now I was no longer sure. I remembered the dwarves' stories of our desert kin, and wondered if my own story would soon reach as bitter an end as had many of Kalasar's allies. Scenario 20, The Heart. Then, I decided I would not go down without a fight. This so-called Emperor would feel my wrath. He would pay dearly for what he did to Anlinde, to my Lord Ledenor, and to the thousands of elves he tortured and killed in the valley. This would be the end of his reign of blood and destruction. There it is, the heart of the Chaos Empire. I figured the rumours weren't too far from the truth, but this is ridiculous. How can these people afford such a ludicrous construction in the middle of the desert? Perhaps they only ever enlisted Uriah's demons in the first place as cheap workforce. The Dwarven scouts report that another large battalion departed for the northwest just a few hours ago. So, I believe the time has come. Looking at it in hindsight, there really was no way our infiltration mission wouldn't turn into a full-fledged assault on the enemy capital. Perhaps it's better this way after all. Now, Galas, will you do the honours? Uh... You know, ask us ready we, whether we are ready, and then give us an overly dramatic discourse about the importance of this battle for the future of Erdia. It's the kind of thing a good leader is expected to do. And aside here, um, lampshade hanging, I mean, this, normally, these kind of lol moments come from Malka Shah, but here we've got Ilinia delivering one as well. Right, are we all ready for the battle ahead? Yes, I'm ready, Master Gallas. My bow obediently awaits your orders, Lord Gallas. Let's get this over with. Then the battle for Irdia begins now. Charge! Wait, and what about the dramatic discourse the lady mentioned? It appears Lord Gallas has just given the order, lads. You know what to do. Don't hold back. 
kill every single one of these fiends. Avenge our fallen brethren for our king, for Hathgar. Charge! The elf lord and his consorts approach from the northeast, sir. Dwarves, dwarves on the northwestern hills, we are under attack. Oh, haha. -ha. Are they truly this naive? Do they believe we were not prepared for this contingency? Prepare for battle. Crush all these vermin to the ground. For Yeknagoth, for the glory of Uriah and the Chaos Empire. Okay, don't get many turns here. Um, the objective is to move Galas, Alinea, or Malkashar into the Dark Keep, or defeat all enemy leaders. Mm, so, we've got 30 turns, there's no early finish bonus, 40% of gold is carried over to the next scenario. Um, so, I guess if I can just completely dominate the map, then I can probably gather up enough units, um, I can gather up enough villages that I can get a nice bonus, but... Um, I suspect it might not be too difficult after this anyway, or it might be not too relevant after this anyway. Alright, so let's let's take a look at the map. Um, we've got random drones on the ground, they're pretty much everywhere. We've got some razor birds, or thunder birds, thunder birds are go. We've got a fairly meager force over here from Althurin, we'll see what money he comes with. And in the center we've got some enemies, we've got some mechanical goliaths of the level 3 variety. We've got the purple player, Limbs of the Hell Guardian and his men, we've got the black player, Il Ramea, the Chaos Cataphract and his men, and we've got General Erval. And um, what's kind of challenging about this is that the bridges are mostly out. <laughs> There's two bridges up, um, and so my foot troops can only go across those bridges. There are also these towers, interesting sentry towers over here, which are, are pretty. They always hit, and they've got ranged attacks. Um, so I've got to be careful with those if I come rushing in. Alright, so I think the... The right answer to this is just a long and steadily protracted siege. And for siege purposes, I've got a few units who are pretty well suited. I love the attention to detail, I love the little flags. And there's a lot of sentry drones over here. I do not like sentry drones. I, I like assault drones even less. Assault drones are just a sort of objectively better version of sentry drones, really. Okay, we will start off with some regular skeletons. I'll actually, I don't know yet whether they're going to be the most useful thing to have, but it's not all that expensive to recruit a whole castle full of them. And I've got more gold than I need. We don't have any visibility issues. So I'll just grab a ghost. And then Sir Slow is going to come in at the back here. And it's going to lead their assault. And so my time has come again to serve as the elves' living weapon, even if I can hardly stand this much death and destruction. I hope you can forgive me for bringing you here. Oh, Galas, don't fret about it. By now, this almost feels like daily routine. Besides, I told you before, I would have come on my own anyway. 
Oh, okay. I actually control the Dwarven player. Well, that's going to make things more interesting and slower. Um, I've got some money. My main aim is to distract the enemy. Um, okay, so... Let's come in here and let's do some fighting. There's the bridge. That's the bridge that we ought to head towards. And there's mountains in the way, and that's great, because dwarves love mountains. Do I have any recalls? I don't think I will. No. Um, but, however, what I do have... I've got you. you. You're pretty good at scouting, and you're loyal, so that's cool. And I'm not wedded to any of you, troops-wise. Um, I've got a huge variety of things that I can recruit. I can recruit flamethrowers! Ah, oh, sweet. Okay. Now, against drones, these guys are the absolute bomb. So, they're expensive. I can't have very many of them. But I'm going to have a few to follow up. I'm just going to recruit kind of a bit of everything for now. Um, not guardsmen. I don't think guardsmen are the call for the, for the moment at all. Runesmith, I can get. They're at level 2. And they're, they're pretty good. They've got their magical attack. That has its advantages. Scout, fast, versatile unit, which dwarves don't have many of. Thunderer. And an old Zerker. For dealing with any invokers that I come across. And, of course, a flamethrower, because why not? Why the hell not? Okay, one Thunderbird immediately scooches off the map. Um, the other three are all heading for us. Let us show these non-believers the real might of the Empire. Gallas, enemy troops are coming from behind. Surprise, Ergen maggots! Uh-oh. Hmm. Seems like it would be worth my time to kill these guys. That's a Demoness Warrior of level 4. She's pretty nasty. Now this also is a defensive position, I can hold quite well defensively here, because the only units that can reach all the way across are the Zephyrs, and maybe any other flying units that uh, these enemies choose to summon. Doesn't look like there are very many at the moment. Oh, the, um, the Shaxthal, of course. Okay, I'm going to get another Castle of Undead. What's good against demons? Um, I mean, incredibly powerful magic users are good against demons. Um, I don't. I've only got a few of those, and I. Um, I guess I think maybe that's maybe the answer is partly that Elinia and Melkishar ultimately end up going over here and fighting Umblila, the demon warrior. 
Arathan, on the other hand, is not super tanky, so he needs to hang around near people who can heal him. Some ghosts as well. And I'll follow these. These guys are going to go... They're going to go west, and then I'm going to follow them up with some more powerful units. Okay, dwarf time. You get the village. As much as anything else, it's good to deny income to the bad guys. Especially since all these villages around, they belong to the brown player, and the brown player is a line of the demoness warrior, so she's going to be minted if I don't start taking control of outlying villages. Normally I'd go round, um, but these are dwarves, you know, mountains are no challenge to their movement capabilities. Alright, let's have some more flamethrowers. I think, given that I'm going to end up fighting at a choke point, it might actually make more sense to get powerful units and units that deal a lot of damage. So that's why I'm going to go quite heavy into the level 3 units. Level 2 units, sorry. Griffin Riders, I think, waste of time on this map, except as far as grabbing villages is concerned. And these drones that are down here will already make it hard enough. Okay, so let's just look at drones resistances again. Okay, yeah, they're, they're basically... they don't care about anything except fire, which is quite nasty against them. So the flamethrowers are going to be key. What about the rest of these chaos units? Demons... Demons have got weird resistances, they've got... They've, you know, Pierce is pretty good against them, actually. Fire is very good, Arcane is exceptionally good, but I don't have any Arcane damage as a dwarf. Um, so, Pierce and Fire, and for Pierce... It's really Thunderers that are the thing to get. Okay, that's that. Alright, so the Zephyrs are coming out first. Alright, the demons at the back are summoning a, f summoning a fairly nasty set of units there. I'm not going to be able to get into position to fend off this assault. I'll just have to do what I can. No one's fast enough to reach me yet, so just keep running. And we'll defend where we have to defend. Demons. I need arcane damage to deal with demons, right? Yes. Okay. So then that means Dark Adepts. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Dark Adepts are a lovely unit type. And I can't have them. Fantastic. Alright, but you know who I can have? Erari the Necromancer. 
Okay, oh, I've also got ghosts and spectres, and I think maybe now is the time to bring out some spectres. And Verwine, the um, the Elvish Enchantress, with a powerful arcane attack. All right, now, Elinia, you head down here, and Melkashar, you also head back here. It's going to take you a while, you're not the fastest of people. And actually, if I'm going to have, if, if I'm going to have to defend against rubbish over here, um, and if I'm going to be defending rather than attacking, then I actually want Erathan to be up here on the front lines. And probably Igor as well. In fact, everyone. Um, maybe keep a Wraith or two up front. Just to do damage against demons every, every once in a while. Alright, Spectres then. Do I have Wraiths? No, I don't have Wraiths. I think Fire is pretty good against demons. Am I right about that? It's not too bad. It's surprisingly good, given that they, they are in creatures of Inferno. And there is daytime in this scenario. It's one of the rare scenarios where it can actually be day. So, I'll have my Forest Spirit back as well. Alright, this is having a negative impact on my finances, and that was predictable. And now, seems like these demons are coming out. Most of them can't reach me yet. Just gonna mass everyone on the edge of this massif. Do I have to... yeah, I just have to not die. And I've not got much money left, so I can afford two troops max. I'll have a scout and an old Zerka. Okay. Griffin Rider could try... No, the Griffin Rider is just going to get torn to shreds. Anyone who heads down here to this area of drones is going to get torn to shreds, but there's no reason for anyone to go there. So you just head up here, and you'll get into position. Okay, they're grabbing my villages, that hurts. Okay, the brown player doesn't have infinite gold. And the drone tried to poison me, but failed because I was on a mountain, and dwarves are just amazing on mountains. And most of the birds are gone. Oh, 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 what's this? Yeah, because they needed more defences. Hmm. 
<laughs> it doesn't even say anything about them. It's just like, oh yeah, and there are some other guys there as well. Fine, whatever. I guess they're all in defensive positions. So it's daytime, it's the morning. And most of these units won't be able to reinforce. So if I can push forward... I can deal a hefty chunk of damage to these guys. Rather not lose anyone, though. Heh <laughs> It's about time this place got a do-over. The fitting of gods who relish in death and destruction, don't you think? And down goes a ray blade in a single assault. Hmm, <clears throat> now... I want to take out the Zephyrs, because I don't like the Zephyrs, because they're just very fast. Okay, one down. Um, Elinia is a little bit undefended there. I can go in with Erethan. For a hopefully decent amount of damage. Yeah, not too bad. Um, and then I think I ought to be able to finish the job with Igor. Not finish the job, but uh, almost. And that's a level three law keeper there. So if it dies, Mal Syria. You don't. You don't just be Mal. Only the only people who can be Mal are, are liches, surely. Um. Okay. So what I want to do is is basically waste some time and space with ghosts. Perfect. And if I can get everyone to stop attacking Elinia, then I've done my job. And these guys should not have too much trouble taking down the rest of the brown forces. We'll need a bit of backup for them though. And that's what these guys, that's what these spectres are here for. All three of them. These two Zephyrs can meet, can, can get to Malkashar. I can try and block them with Weak Undead. But they are skirmishes, so it ultimately won't have much effect unless I can get in a straight line. Which you can. So maybe in Ghost Interference is the answer. Ghost interference seems to be always the answer. Right, now they should... I mean, most of them don't have any choice, but they should go for the kill on the ghosts before trying anything else. The only thing that could happen is that everyone tries to gang up on poor old Igor over here with his 30% defense. Okay, and I'll put you there. Well, it doesn't make any difference. I have to put you there. Well, even that doesn't make any difference. Dang it! Eh, okay. Okay, you folks take up position somewhere where you can form a battle line.
If you attack my regular skeleton warriors with your zephyrs, I will be most aggrieved. As for you, you just go there for now. Now here I'm going to get a castle full of ghosts, I think. With this many high level units around, I shouldn't have any problem leveling some of them up. Maybe I should have fought the battle further back with those skeletons. Not sure I should have rushed out as far as I did. Oh well. What's done is done. Brown's out of income. And over here... For Hearthgar! That wasn't particularly dramatic as attacks go. However, um, and your name is Analus, which is kind of funny. Um, however, someone else can quite easily finish the job, I think. There we go. Alamalus, you're the man. Bring someone over here so that the demon... What defense has it got in these? Okay, it's got 60% on the hills. I want it to fight here, ideally. You. You're the one. going to take up all of these defensive positions, I think. You stay behind, ready to give someone a nasty shock. And everyone else, power forward. How far can you reach? Not far, not far enough, good. you folk down so that you're in a good position to strike back. And at the moment, all you really need to do, you dwarves, is to distract troops away from my, uh, from the other team, because they're the one that needs to win the battle. Alright. Green player advances. Ooh, crispy fried Chaos Invoker. The brown player is the one I'm worried about this time round. They've gone for the simple approach, which is just. Uh, try and kill, but uh, Sir Slow is proving his worth here. And as I thought, they're going to go for the ghost. Uh, I think, yeah, it's curtains for that ghost. Shame, had experience, but predictable. Now the brown player doesn't seem to realise what kind of danger it's in. Okay, Dwarven Casualty. And the teal player is not guarding, in fact wasting no time in just coming out and uh, trying to dominate. So many fast skirmishing units here that uh, it'll be very easy to lose this one unwittingly. Ah! 
What about the, does the Zephyr have any better resistance to fire? Yeah, okay, they have some. And the normal demons? Yeah, no, they don't have any. Okay. So close to being able to reach the BBEG. Could come in with the spectres. That. How can I best steamroll? I think Malkeshar should take out the Zephyr. Okay! Alright, my steamroller fails to steamroll. Oh, this has been abysmal so far. On all counts. El Elinia can't save the day. She's in she's out of position. Still not great. This ghost is quite fast. Oh, can I get a normal, a normal skeleton in to get the kill? Only on, only in, in a in an awkward position, unfortunately. So I think this ghost ought to be trying to get the kill. Can't manage it. Don't really want to waste you on this. This is this is not where a, a forest spirit ought to shine. I might be able to use Erethan because... Oh, just another ghost. I think, yeah, another ghost is best. Okay, so I can kill things. It just takes a while. You're the one dealing fire damage. But not very successfully. You're blocked from coming in. A um, bit worried about Deathy the Spectre. I think Deathy the Spectre might be going down. Erethan, can you stand there and take out the Zephyr? Because I really don't like Zephyrs. I'd need two hits. Okay, you get the kill. That's something. You two are useless. Everyone over here is useless. Um, it's these four that I'm worried about. And I think Igor is going to die if he goes there. So I'm not going to do that. But then again, Erethan might die if I don't go there. But then only one, only one person can get to Erethan. So I'm probably going to be okay. So then Igor, you stay where you are. The ghosts can all come over here. That, this is, yeah, because it's been less successful, it's, it's a lot uglier a fight than I anticipated. The good thing is, the rest of these demonesses, their ranged attacks are chill attacks, which means that they're not ultimately very good against spectres and against ghosts, which are most of my forces on this flank. Okay, over here, I'm gonna have pretty much all my remaining elves, I think. I'll just start, I'll just recall everyone. All right, I've got one 
uh, I need to keep myself 20 gold for next, uh, 120 gold to recruit next turn. That's fine. I'll get some more ghosts. I'm just going to fight the rest of this battle with ghosts. Okay, and over here... down. Nice work. Let's have that repeat itself, please. Not quite, but not too far off. I can either spring left and have you deal extra damage here, or I can spring right and have you deal extra damage here. I think you're going to do less damage anyway, so... This flank is going to come apart like wet tissue paper, unfortunately. You. Oh, I can't. Just can't get the kill. Just can't get the kill. All right, you stay back, and you retreat to here because you've got slightly higher defense there. And I'll take what comes. Are there any dogs around? No dogs, but there's some nastier. Chaos Cavalier, I haven't seen them before in this campaign. Alright, the blue player. Time to charge. I think it's time to charge. So Alamalus. Yeah. Abbott. Hmm. It'd be nice if there was something I could do to... If I had a unit that could slow over here. I mean, slow plus... Uh, slow plus Berserker Frenzy is a really terrifying combination, but that's not really what dwarves are good at. So Doldorithas can just... And then, I mean, this is a level 3 Demoness Warrior. Um, if I can get her out of the way, I will be very happy indeed. Maybe though, <laughs> that's actually pretty lol. Um, I can I can get rid of a Chaos Magus this way, which I would never otherwise be able to hope to do quickly with dwarves. Um, so I'm just going to sacrifice this one. You're level two. I huh, didn't realize that. Okay. Can run in with some of these others too. I mean, all of you three can actually reach this invoker. can't reach. None of you can. You can. No kill. Everyone else is a ranged unit of one, sh one stripe or another. That's a good position. Mm. 
like shooting a ghost with a with a pistol is kind of one of the more lol things about this game, but uh, there we are. The dwarves here are going full on death or glory. And um, the answer is, yeah, I mean, the answer is death, obviously. Is death or glory really a question? Now, since these folks have flown away, ah, it's, it's very tempting to go and grab another village. But villages don't do this team any good because I, I'm not probably going to head back. What I could do, though, is try and get a kill here. And, against all the odds, I succeed. Um, you, if you go there, will get butchered whatever you do. So you stay. And now the dwarves are threatening. Oh, what I really want them to do now, next next job is for them to go get to the bridge and hold it. Because that, I think, as dwarves, they will be able to do really well. Okay, painful turn coming up. Hammering. That guy gave his life for the cause. Oh, these guys are well armoured. And well, that was a good outcome. Again, they're going for my ghosts, interestingly. And that ghost survived. Ha ha! Get in. Okay, going for cold damage against the spectre. And still, the brown units are not really coming back to defend the brown leader. You might expect a little bit more self-awareness here. Right, those guys are getting battered. And some Zephyrs are coming. They're getting distracted by the Dwarves, which is good. The extra Teal units, though, are really just annoying. Okay, you come down here. A... Oh, no, 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 no. It's a shame that your attacks are so useless against these demons. Can you? Yes, you can. So sad, that could have been such a beautiful kill. Ledinor and our fallen comrades! And you're very close to an after maximum level advancement, which is fantastic. You can't do anything useful, that's fine. Malkeshar can only do one thing that's useful.
Nice. Okay, the leader's exposed now, but the leader is really tough, so I'm going to need Malkashar to deal with the leader. Or am I? Should I just go straight in and take it? I think actually it's better not to in this instance. No regrets there though. And that skeleton gets a nice level 2 kill. And now the job is to kill this guy I think. Yeah. And everyone else is so out of position that they won't even get back next turn. Ah, so little damage though. Hmm. Can you get one-shotted? No, you can't get one-shotted by the leader. So then I'm, I, I don't feel too bad about doing this. Nope, don't feel bad about doing that at all. Alright, this ghost's gonna die, unfortunately, because I keep giving these ghosts experience and then they bite the dust. Oh well. Now once everyone's dead over here, I won't need units on this flank anymore. So... I might as well head back with these ghosts. Um, I'm going to fall back to a more defensive position once I've done some damage over here. So first you... I'd be able to get a kill on a on a Zephyr. Well, I still might. No, not with luck like this. Dreadbat, maybe. Dreadbat will die if I do this. Still, you know, I'm not going to be recalling Dreadbats in the final stages of this campaign. So. You know, oh yeah, I just I just love to be able to kill this Zephyr completely dead. But it's just not my day for attacking. Alright, you shoot. Who who can you shoot best? Neither of them really. We can up the level two unit. And you You could, if you got really lucky, get a kill on either of these, and then you'd get a level. Um, this one is more annoying, because this one is is in a better position. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Now Sir Slow has got himself a little apprentice here. I mean, it's just going to get killed immediately, but... You know, <laughs> what are the... Rushing forward there with the ghost is a huge waste of resources, just puts everyone in range. Um, you come all the way back to here. And I'm going to surround you with slightly tougher units.
Okay, if I recruit a full castle of nasty units now, I won't have enough money. So minus 22, something else. I'm not in a hurry on this flank, that's the good thing. So I can recruit someone who costs 18 gold, as long as they don't cause income. Alright, and then next turn is the turn when I recall the remaining six. Okay, the death or glory push from the dwarves continues. And because it's the daytime, I don't really need to worry that much here. I, need, I do need to worry about these two, they're coming in fast. But dwarves, I mean, dwarves are fairly resistant to fire, if I recall correctly. Oh, they're fairly resistant to everything, so no worries. Um... If you get flash cannons. Can you get a one shot? No, not quite. Oh, you can get in. And you're all too slow, so it mean, that means it's up to the troops on the front lines. But during the day, I feel confident in doing this. Okay, a lot of damage, but um, nothing I can't handle. Loyal Griffin Rider gets the kill over here. It's Berserk Frenzy time. And now you're actually close to a level, which means that everyone is going to annihilate you, unfortunately. And I can't really protect you from that. I can put you there. And I do have another one of you. And the dwarves have successfully. Are you? You're, you've just spawned, and you're in range, so you'll come. But the dwarves have successfully taken control. Of this side of the battlefield. For now. For now. It won't last forever. I don't think they can punch through. That would be lovely, but I don't think it's realistic. shame. And the leadership is coming in all the time. Well, this is why I was stupid to put a ghost unsupported up front. Good, good for you. And it won't avail you in the long term. Yep, there you go. Some more leadership there. And most of the recruited troops, actually, from black and green, are in this fight. Still everything to play for, as they say. Oh, 
Okay, the ghost goes, does go down, but it does require the leader to come out of out of their hidey hole and onto the sands where they should be weaker. Well, you did grand. You don't do them too badly. Why are these guys attacking a melee? You'd think they want to do range damage, but apparently not. Okay, the remnants of my skeletons are starting to crumble. But Sir Slow has the backup. Brace yourselves, boys! The long dark is upon our heels, and ready to liven up this hell of a battle! Okay, Arcane is what you're really weak against. And Malkeshar, unfortunately, can't reach. Oh, there's a Ray Blade there as well. You do need to be careful on this flank. There are some units that, especially you, you're annoying. Okay, you pull back a tad. Malkeshar, you get onto the castle. Try and take this guy out of the picture. Good job. Now this... If this person, if Umlila is incredibly jammy, she could take out Alinea here. Either way, Alinea is going to be weakened, and I don't like that. Still, I've got so many units here that can get in on Umlila with arcane damage. Okay, that was an underwhelming display of arcane power. You are going to do damage, but you're going to get hurt bad. Why didn't you... Why didn't I move you into the, into the aura? I should have done that. Now, unfortunately... This is going very badly. Come on, some big hits. Alright, my spectres are getting pretty knackered here. And here is exactly why it's generally not advisable to put a unit that casts light in the path of a spectre. Um, no, you're not going to do that any better, Igor. Alright, living on a prayer at this point. Come on! Yeah! Yeah, bitch. You're too slow, you're too slow, you're too slow, you're too slow. It's really only this guy who's a concern. Potential 42 damage there. But I don't think that's a potential that's realizable, fortunately. And everyone else is just too slow.
All right, you need to go back and get some healing because you're not looking too rosy. You hop back. Oh, you go there because I don't want... Oh no, okay, you can't reach, you can't reach Alinea anyway, so I can, I could put you over here. Well, how will that go for you? Yeah, you won't die if you get attacked. So more gold. And then you come up here. And maybe it's time to press forward again here, I think. I can certainly do some damage. worth a try. That there is not really a fight to be taken with ghosts. Dread back and finish that one off. Or maybe one of these ghosts can. No, the ghosts are all too slow. protect but he also attack. I should have used the necromancer for that, but never mind. heavily weakened. You two... Hmm. It if I could have killed this one, but it was not to be. Alright, so now it's time to bring out the big guns. 
Tell all the Elvish Marshal. It's Night Gaunt. Avenger. Sharpshooter. Prowler. And Sothenia the Shide. Okay. Dwarf time! Don't have any healers over here, that's a shame. But, you could go there. And that will enable me to bring in a flamethrower over here. Oh wow. Oh wow, that was just perfect. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Ghost over here. Althurin himself is ready for a fight. Which fight should he take? This one, actually. Well, maybe I should save him for sterner enemies. For you, we've got a Griffin Master here on the front. This is not looking bad. If I put someone here, I can make, might even be able to lure one of these mechanical goliaths out. Who else can I lure? There's a... okay. Yeah? I'd rather not lose a runesmith. They are good units, after all. And my dwarvish troops are looking pretty... pretty... <laughs> thin on the ground now. Okay, so I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to just going to move you to a position where you're better defended. But this is a good place to be on the Dwarven flank. Green's forces are really very feeble at the moment. That green gets a kill to prove me wrong, but that's fine. Purple, not doing fantastically. Oh! What did you do that for? Now this so far... So far, this has been a good turn for me and a bad turn for the random number generator, as far as the enemy is concerned. And even that was pretty nice. You go, Althurin. Just killing everything here. So slow is surrounded. Might be his last song, swan song. His, yeah, a slow dance. Hmm. 
But with the leader of the forward camp defeated, and uh, the battle in the centre looking like it could swing either way at this point, and the dwarves safely holding this flank, that is where we're going to take a break. Sorry everyone, see you next time. <laughs>